Hi guys, this is Amr from Certified Power. Today I'll be showing you how to set up an easy spread controller. We recommend using at least two people for this job. We also recommend using the appropriate personal protective equipment. That includes, but is not limited to, eye protection, gloves, and steel-toed footwear. It is not required to load the truck with material. However, loading the truck to capacity before this process will result in a more accurate trim. Make sure your truck engine is operating at 1200 to 1400 RPMs. We want to make sure we have enough hydraulic flow to run our functions. An easy spread setup will cover all these topics in this order. To set up your easy spread controller, we want to be in our configuration menu. First, your controller needs to be turned off. Press and hold the blast button while turning power on. Continue holding the blast button until both blast and pause LEDs begin flashing simultaneously. This indicates that we have accessed the configuration process. First, we will set the control frequency. This is the frequency at which the spreader control drives the valve. Use the feed buttons along with this guide to set the desired valve frequency. Default is set at 120 Hz, but for this example, I will set mine to 180 Hz or level 7. I will use the feed buttons to increase the value to 7. Use this guide to confirm your selection using these LED lights. Press the pause button to confirm and move on to the next section. It is important to note that pressing the blast button will proceed using the previous settings. Next, we need to set the feeder minimum trim. Increase the feed rate until the auger begins to move. Material will begin dropping. Press pause to accept and proceed. Set the maximum feeder trim. Increase the feed rate until the auger is moving at maximum speed. Material will be dropping. Press pause to accept and continue. Now if you notice, it is no longer the blast LED that is flashing, but it is now the pause LED. This means we have now moved on to setting the trims for the spinner. Increase your spinner output until your spinner begins to rotate. We want to set our minimum trim at the point where the spinner is turning consistently without stalling. Press pause to accept and continue. Set your spinner maximum trim. First, increase your feeder output to between 30 and 40%. Material will be dropping. Increase your spinner output until you observe the maximum material throw distance. Keep in mind that we must not exceed the mechanical rotational capability of the spinner assembly. Press pause to save and continue. If you notice, it is no longer the pause LED now that is flashing, but it is the ground speed LED. This indicates that we have now moved on to setting trims for the auxiliary channel. Set your auxiliary minimum trim. This is the point at which you observe the minimum consistent flow out of the liquid nozzle. If your system does not include a liquid function, set this to zero. Press pause to save and proceed. Set the auxiliary maximum trim. This is the point at which you observe the maximum flow out of the liquid nozzle while maintaining the safe operating limits of the liquid motor and pump combination. If your system does not have a liquid function, set this to zero. Press pause to save and continue. Now we see that the blast and pause LEDs are flashing simultaneously. 
This indicates that all of our trims have been set and we are at the point of setting the blast time. Use the feed arrows and this chart to set your blast time. For the sake of this example, I will set the blast time to 10 seconds. Set this to zero if you want your blast set as latched on or off. Press pause to continue. Set your ground speed mode using the feeder control buttons. A value of zero means your ground speed switch is disabled. A value of five means ground speed triggered, which uses the speedo signal only to start and stop the spreader. A value of 10 means your ground speed mode is oriented, which will allow your spreader to work in automatic mode using the speedo signal. Press pause to continue. You will notice all three LEDs will begin to flash simultaneously. Now if you want to link your spinner to your auger, set the feed value to 1. Linking the spinner to your auger will set your spinner to minimum trim when your auger is running. Setting the feed value to 0 will not link the spinner to the auger. Press pause to continue. Notice the three LEDs will flash faster. Set your feed value to 1 if you want to link your liquid to the auger. This would mean that your auxiliary or liquid function will be set to minimum trim when you engage the feeder. If you do not want to link your auxiliary channel to your auger, set the value to 0. Press pause to continue. Now your blast and ground speed LEDs will be flashing. Use the feed buttons to adjust your LED brightness. A value of zero means the LEDs are as dim as possible. And a value of 10 means they are at their brightest. Press pause to continue. Now set your unseat percentage. The unseat percentage is the voltage percent increase that you would require to unseat the valve after a full stop. Use the feed control buttons and this guide to set this percentage. And press pause to continue. Now the blast LED will be slowly flashing. Set your skip blast mode. Turning this to on will allow the spreader to be placed in blast mode directly out of pause mode. When the blast event is done, the spreader goes directly back to pause. Press pause to continue. Finally, set spinner boost in blast mode. Turning the setting on will set the spinner to maximum trim during the blast period. Press pause to continue. When your blast and pause LEDs are alternately flashing, this means your setup was successfully completed. Restart your easy spread controller and you should be good to go. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call on the number provided on the screen or visit our website at www.certifiedpowersolutions.com.